right, I think we're live. There's the big button. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm John Montgomery. This is Sophia, my daughter. In the room, we also have Pastor Carol over here, my wife, Tatiana, and my son, Ben. And tonight, we're going to be working on a family advent workshop. Um, you've got the packet. should have come in these cute little purple deals. Uh, thank you to Lisa and Pastor Carol for getting those out to everyone. We do have more if anybody wants any um, that didn't get some. We have a couple of really neat things inside here. Um, so if you haven't taken a look at them, some of them here should be a little family advent workshop newsletter. Um, some information about being the light and some table talk challenges, things to talk about at the table um, during dinner time, and a fun little advent event calendar. Um, we were eyeballing some of these and thought they looked pretty neat. So um, be sure to share some of those with the family. And then also if you're taking part or even if you're not taking part in the Incarnation Bible Study, should have some information about that. And then just some information about Advent and celebrating during Christmas. Um, and we've Jesus got a, birthday. Uh, and Jesus' birthday, yes. Thank you. Um, so, without further ado, some of the things that we're going to try and do here in our short time together tonight. Um, the packet should have also come with a lot of construction paper and yeah. some of my beautiful handwriting. So, one of the things that we're going to do tonight is make an Advent wreath. Um, a family style advent wreath. So you should have a paper plate, you should have some colored construction papers, um, and a whole bunch of green. And for those of you that have done this before, uh, Thanksgiving time is real common times to do these types of things. But thanks to the magic of television, we already have some green construction paper hands all traced and cut out um, to help make our wreath. So, if you have all that stuff with you, by all means, feel free to grab it and go with us. Um, but it's real simple as, as what we're doing tonight, just making some fun little family stuff. Um, kind of getting in the spirit and getting ready to go. So, like I said, we've got uh, the magic of TV on our side. Uh, my kids and I and even my wife have traced out some of our hands and then we cut them out so we have a nice little stack with an arm's reach here. Um, that's the neat thing about wreaths. If you think about the wreaths that you see, almost none of them are perfectly uniform. Even if you go and buy a, an artificial one from Hobby Lobby and you come down and see me. Um, most of those aren't even perfectly uniform. And that's where using the family's hands comes in because everybody's hands are different size, but this becomes part of the families. You're all doing it together. Mm -hmm. That's the special thing about this. Absolutely. So, let's see. So, some of these we're going to go ahead and glue together tonight. We don't have a lot of time, so we're just going to show you some of, the, some of the basics. And if you have questions, by all means, hit me up on Facebook, and I'll be more than happy to help walk you through. Um, we're going to use glue sticks because it's a lot easier to control and in the ad, uh, event that maybe it doesn't hold scotch tape is amazing but uh, basically what you're gonna do you want to take your paper plate you'll see if you you find this stuff on Pinterest um, a lot of people using paper plates and they'll cut the circles out um, that's fun I like doing that Especially if I'm going to hang it on the wall. If you have, like we do at home, a fun little dog that likes to stick his nose into everything, cutting a hole in the center of your paper plate allows you to be able to hang it up on the wall. And I'll show you two different ways to make the candles for it. So that way uh, you can hang it on the wall or you can leave it there and be able to set it on the table. Um, totally up to you how you want to do it. But simple little Elmer's glue stick here and then just taking your hands, applying a little bit of glue. Dab it onto the paper plate. Dab it onto the paper plate, okay? And then you want to stagger hands so that way it looks like a wreath. Um, real nice and simple. Mm -hmm. um, you should have also received in there a template with my chicken scratch handwriting and a couple of fun little things here. 
I'm going to go ahead and have Sophie, my assistant here, go ahead and cut out the ones called Holly. Okay, um, I've got some some flames here already pre-traced and also a couple of the pine cones pre-traced. But if you could cut out the holly and we'll get some of those going. Um, and while she's doing that, I'm actually going to show you, if you don't want to go to all of this effort, um, there are all sorts of ways to be able to represent Advent candles. Um, Pastor Carol actually shared a video with me uh, a couple weeks ago, and boy did I love this. This was awesome. Um, if you have punch cups left over from the holidays, you can take four simple punch cups, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can represent the candles. Um, one way you can use, grab my scissors here, felt as just a simple little coaster. Um, these are like 33 cents. Some people may already have them. If you have purple construction paper, if you have purple fabric, any number of things. Remember, purple and pink are two main colors besides the white Christ candle. But we're just going to cut this real quick and simple. Four pieces. Into four pieces, absolutely. It says four cups. Four cups. Because we have the four colored candles. Okay, and you can very easily just use a coaster. We have little LED tea lights, and I believe we have plenty of these if people need. Um, purple is the color of loyalty, and Jesus is our king. So hopefully everybody heard that. Um, remove the little plastic deal. And then a real simple way, hopefully you can see that down there, yep. to, uh, to be able to view. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi, Ben. <laughs> One of the other fun things that we saw was colored sand, and there's lots of different ways to represent this. You can use pony beads, you can use actual colored sand, you can get tempera paint powder, um, chalk, all kinds of different chalk things. Um, I've even seen a couple others when I was going through and doing some research, people just using Sharpie marker on the inside to kind of color these. But this is real simple and really neat because you can reuse it over and over. Mm -hmm. um, sand shouldn't be too much of a choking hazard. Um, so if you do get an animal, once again, our little dog that likes to stick his nose into everything, um, that's another simple way to be able to show and represent the candles and use the colors. So. And you can mix them up. You can do different ways. While she's working on our holly, I'm going to pop these on our little display table behind us. Sorry, it's taking less on That's okay. So, there are a lot of symbols that we use and recognize in an advent wreath. And a lot of times, we see them, but we don't necessarily remember or understand what they're for. Um, Advent wreaths have actually been around for quite a while. Um, the very first one, uh, you've probably seen pictures of it out there, where it's large, or four large white candles on a wheel, and then little red candles, and a lot of those little red candles. There was four white candles, and then 20 red candles, and that was as the legend has it, uh, done by a German minister who wanted to get the kids involved and be able to give them a way to count down. Slowly through time, we've eased it up a little bit and we've got four candles, plus that fifth important white Christ candle. Um, and we put them in that circle so that way we know that it's infinite, like God's love. Um, let's see, the Alpha and the Omega, no beginning, no, or he is the beginning and the ending. All kinds of symbols there. Also, we use evergreen branches. When you think about winter time, especially here in Iowa, all of our evergreen trees, our Christmas trees, they still look like they're alive while everything else has lost its leaves. So it helps us to remember that even in the colder months, life still goes on. And, and we even have uh, lasting life through Jesus. 
Um, holly leaves and berries are very, very common this time of year also. So very simple looking holly leaves that you can take your pieces of construction paper that are left over from cutting your hands. You can, you can also cut those out too. Exactly. You can trace those out. And cut them. And cut them. So that way you can add little holly leaves and branches around to your wreath. Um, the reason that we use holly, or one of the many reasons, uh, you can think of the pointy sharp ends of the holly leaves and branches as kind of like Christ's crown that he wore, um, his, his crown of thorns. So it helps us to remember once again the beginning, his birth, and ultimately the end of his life where he died for our sins. So it really helps to bring us together um, all the way through there. Um, also pine cones are really common. A lot of those wreaths out there have pine cones and that's why we have a, a really poorly drawn and I please forgive me I'm not an artist by any means but uh, a pine cone because it carries the seed of new life um, so when you think about once again those evergreen branches pine cones come from those evergreen trees and it helps to spread new life um, just like your life in Christ and being reborn so to speak um, so how much time do we have? I guess I didn't even ask how long I got tonight. <laughs> but uh, next, what we're going to do is probably the more difficult part, the, the candles. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say it's more difficult kind of depends on how you want to do it. You could do the real simple, Ben, nobody wants to see how fast you can run tonight. Maybe next time, okay? Um, the, the really, really simple way of making a candle out of paper is to just roll it. But since we want to be able to stick a flame to it, if you can see what I'm doing here, we're going to put a notch up on the top. So that way when we roll it, we have a centerpiece that we're going to be able to attach a flame to, just like the wick of an actual candle. Oops, that'll work. So that is difficult. It is. It is very difficult. Okay. And the way that I tend to do this, or the way that I was taught many, many years ago when I was these guys' age, if you give this a hard fold, then you can roll everything inside of it. And that way you have that centerpiece. And once again, the wonders of Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue sticks. Helps to keep the mess off the shirt sometimes. And just in case that Elmer's glue doesn't take right away, A crafter's best friend. Yes. Why a crafter's best friend? Because they use it quite a bit. Helps to hold things in place. Yes. So a real simple, be able to work candle. <laughs> One of the other ways, like I said, if you were to cut a circle out of that paper plate, you can do basically the same thing, except instead of rolling, we're going to fold it. And we want to get a good layer so that when it's hanging on the wall, it stays standing throughout the season. So we're going to just fold it over once. You can use that purple construction paper. Um, if you have extras, then you can make more decorations or... Uh, um, Next week we have another little plan that you can use some of that leftover construction paper for. So don't throw away the big pieces.
rub that so it's nice and smooth. Very carefully use your scissors and make a notch, kind of like how I did there. How did you do it? Cut little squares out of the top there and out of the top there. Okay? I'll try to make them. Now, each week we're going to need a flame to be able to light our candle with. So now we get to be really creative. And on your template, we have different sizes of flames that you can use depending on how big you make your candles, depending on how many layers of flame you want to make. I tend to just do a yellow and then an orange on top. And I'll do two layers of yellow so that way I have something to be able to slide over my paper wick. So each week I'll be able to very easily slide that flame on there. And then we can have our little family prayer and be able to talk about each week what it is that we're doing when we light. Um, all done? Here, like we're going to make that just a little bit narrower. Sorry. Nope, that's okay. I'm not the best cutter. Well, hey, it's the first time you've ever done it, right? Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see how these turn so, out. So, just a real simple, and that way when you go to make your wreath, and you hang it on the wall, you can just... Is that in camera? There we go. Got to get going the right way. You can hang it on the wall and very easily just glue it to your wreath. Okay? Now the flames, like I said, you can even try and freehand your own um, depending on how big you make it or maybe you're a little bit better of an artist than I am. Um, I try. I, I do try. He tries at least. He so we're just going to very easily make the big yellow raindrop. And you can do this in orange or yellow, whichever, whichever direction you want to go. Can I cut out the orange? Yep. So you get started on those, and I'm going to make a couple of these. And we'll need to make a flame for each of the candles. If you do just the four candles um, and then the fifth for Christ, then you'll need five flames minimum. Um, if you only do the four and then celebrate with a different special candle at home for your uh, Christmas Eve candle, then by all means do that too. Remember this is about bringing the family together, not necessarily doing it the exact same way that I do it or you see it on YouTube. It's about family time celebrating Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ. One. There's one. All right. Glue stick. And then we can just drop our orange right there in the center. And then my good friend Scotch tape helps to make a pocket. Thank you. So now, for ease of use tonight, we have our first week's purple candle. <coughs> Week one, our purple candle is the candle of hope, also known as the prophecy candle. As we light it, we tend to think about all the prophecies foretold to us in the Old Testament about the coming, or the Adventus in Latin, or Advent as we slowly brought it down to 
for the coming Christ Messiah. Week two, our peace candle is going to be the Bethlehem candle. As we light this, we reflect on Joseph and Mary's journey to Bethlehem. We also cherish how Jesus was our Prince of Peace and what that really means. Things like sharing his light, we can build peace with our friends and neighbors. The Hebrew greeting shalom actually means peace. By studying and praying, we can also bring ourselves an inner peace. Week three, our rose candle, also known as the joy candle, or the shepherd's candle, we celebrate with on, and I'm probably going to screw up this word, God at Sunday, which is Latin for rejoice. When we light that candle, we do it with joy and gladness in the advent of our redemption in Christ. We remember the joy the shepherds felt when the angels came to them singing their glad tidings. Week four, we go back to Violet, our love candle. So much of what we learn from Jesus is about love. His parents' love for him, Joseph's love for Mary, Mary's motherly love for the child of God. We are commanded to love our neighbor and to love our God. We learn that love is patient, love is kind, and love does not envy. And all of these things, if you're like me and every year I watch Charlie Brown, is what Linus is telling us Christmas is all about. On Christmas Eve, we'll make and or already have our white Christ candle. It's either lit on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day because through him, we learn how to live the other four. You can have the folded candle, yes. So this candle reminds us of his teachings and that we can be a light for others. So hopefully tonight we were able to kind of teach a few ways to bring the family together in this season. Um, I know this year is, is especially different with everything going on, but that's the neat thing about the internet you can craft like we did over the internet. You can do things as a family activity over the internet. So from our family to yours, we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us. We'll be sure to post pictures of our finished wreath. Be sure to post pictures of your finished wreath. And have a Merry Christmas if we don't get to see you before then. Thank you.